Hello, um, I welcome you to this uh, pediatric uh, lesson on um, code chain. Okay, we're going to look at the code chain, we understand what the code chain is all about. Right, so um, let's define what is meant by the code chain. So this is a means for storing and transporting vaccine in a potent state from the manufacturer to the person being immunized. This definition is by the International Council of Nurses and it was coined in 2005. This is very important component of immunization program and without it, all vaccine may lose potency over time, especially if exposed to heat. Some also lose their potency when frozen. The cold chain system can enhance the ongoing quality safety and efficacy of an immunization program. Nurses, supervisors, and others who handle vaccines should do what they can do to increase the use of the cold chain system, especially in remote and underserviced areas. Vaccines need to be distributed, stored, and administered at recommended temperature in order to avoid wastage. The cold chain has three elements. Okay, it has three elements. The cold chain comprises of the following major elements. The first one is the personnel. Uh, on the personnel, we are looking at who is using and maintaining the equipment and that person who is providing the health service, that is on the personnel. Then the equipment, we are looking at what we are using for safe storage and transportation of the vaccines. Then procedures. To manage the program and control distribution and use of the vaccines, a typical cold chain system begins when vaccines are manufactured okay, and ends with the child being immunized. So we have a typical cold chain system there, which shows um, the vaccine manufacturer Okay, up to the child that is being immunized. So it's important you know how the vaccine moves from the manufacturer up to the child being immunized without necessarily disturbing the potency of the drug. All right, so all vaccines are sensitive to light. It's important to know that the storage condition for vaccines and their dilient is very important in order to, for you to you have potent vaccines. So all vaccines are sensitive to heat. However, some are more sensitive than others. World Health Organization's expanded program for immunization recommends that the safe temperature range between positive 2 to positive 8 uh, degrees Celsius for storing most expanded program immunization vaccines. OPV, oral polio vaccine, is the most heat sensitive vaccine and must be kept between negative 15 degrees and negative 25 degrees. Uh, WHO Expanded program of immunization no longer recommends that freeze dried vaccines such as uh, BCG and measles, okay, that they can be kept 
at frozen at negative 220 degrees Celsius. Storing them at this temperature is not harmful, but it takes up unnecessarily deep freeze storage space. Okay, and this was an observation by International Council of Nurses in uh, 2005. Instead, they should be stored between positive 2 degrees to positive 8 degrees Celsius. All freeze-dried freeze vaccines become more heat-sensitive after they have been reconstituted. Hence the reason we are also stalling other drugs at this same temperature. BCG and measles also are quite sensitive to light. Normally, they are supplied in dark brown glass bowls to protect them against light damage. They should always be covered and protected from strong light. And when you talk about pentavalent, DPT, uh, hepatitis B and Hep B, they are also sensitive to both heat and freezing and should be protected. Diluent are less sensitive to storage temperature than vaccines and do not need to be kept in the cold chain. However, when vaccines are reconstituted, the diluent should be at the same temperature as the vaccine. This is to avoid thermoshock to the vaccine. For daily use of or when planning to reconstitute vaccine within the next 24 hours, diluent should always be kept in the cold chain between positive 2 to positive 8 degrees Celsius. Okay, and the normal practice here is that the diluents are also kept in the same fridge with the, the vaccines. Diluent must never be frozen as freezing increases the risk of cracking the glass and contaminating the contents. Freeze-dried uh, freeze vaccines and their diluents should always be distributed together. Each type of freeze-dried vaccine requires a specific diluent and it's important you follow this in order to avoid over diluting the drugs. Reconstituted valves should therefore be used in one immunization session or within six hours after constitution. All right, so cold chain equipment and storage of vaccine. That is what we are looking at next. So all cold chain equipment has to comply with a set of performance standards that are defined by WHO uh, program and uh, United Nations uh, Child's uh, Children's Fund program, UNICEF, or the national policy. The recommended equipment typically used for vaccine storage are cold rooms, uh, refrigerators, and freezers. For transporting vaccines, equipment such as cold boxes, vaccine carriers, and international containers are commonly used. Healthcare professionals and all personnel handling vaccines should understand the purpose and function of the various cold chain equipment. Nurses often need to select, replace, maintain, or upgrade equipment needed for stalling and transporting vaccine in their immunization setting. During transport between one level and the next, all vaccines must be maintained at a temperature between negative zero degrees to eight degrees Celsius. Remember to check the expiry date of all vaccines and ensure that they will not expire during storage or before they can be distributed and used. So you can rotate the vaccine stock and vaccines that have been received first and should be distributed or used first that is using the FIFO, FIFO kind of approach. First in, first out, first expiry, first out. It is also important to note that vaccine must always be transported in insulated boxes with sufficient ice 
to ensure it remains between the recommended temperature of zero to eight degrees Celsius. And never use an insulated boxes or forget the ice. So we have cold boxes that are used. So an example is that one that is uh, we have shown there, the container with the tight fitting insulated lid. The temperature inside the box is maintained by the ice pack and the cold box is designed for the same. Collection and transport of large quantities of vaccines at temperature between zero to, to positive eight degrees Celsius and the storage of vaccines during maintenance periods, e.g. when cleaning or defrosting a fridge or freezer. Emergency storage of vaccines, e.g. during breakdowns or cold chain equipment, power failure and uh, similar situations can be done. But even in this situation, you have to ensure that the valves are um, kept between zero to Eight degrees, positive eight degrees Celsius. The BHO, so I'm talking about refrigerators, the BHO in 1998 recommends some of the following. In health facilities, it's recommended that vaccines are kept for a maximum of one month. Store, store of all vaccines in the refrigerator at zero to positive. 8 degrees. Placing OPV and measles vaccine closest to the evaporator. Placing the DPT hip on lower shelves away from the evaporator. And also it's important not to keep vaccine in the door shelves. It's other notes include keeping sealed water bottles in the bottom of the refrigerators keeping diluent next to its vaccine or mark it clearly if it is placed on a different shelf. How to load vaccines in the refrigerator? You can see my next slide. So this is the way you load the vaccines. Okay, we have the top door there. We have the bottom door. Okay, and then uh, at the container there, we have um, the bottom shelf. So the there are numbers that uh, that you have tried to attach to that so that you can easily follow. So the freezing compartment that's the top, the ice pack, ice. Then we have two refrigerator first shelf. Live viral vaccines like polio and measles are kept. Then the second shelf, uh, BCG the most uh, thermometer temperature. That's what you find there. Then um, in the fourth, we find the third shelf where DPT, HIB, and uh, diluent with a the thermostat can be found. In the fourth, lowest shelf, okay, that is container, waiting container. So vaccine coolers, that is another one example of a vaccine cooler. A vaccine carrier is an insulator or vaccine carriers, vaccine courier carriers. So a vaccine carrier is an insulated box with a tight fitting insulated lid. The temperature in the vaccine carrier is maintained by the ice packs that you have to put inside. It is designed for transportation of small quantities of vaccine at a temperature between zero to positive eight uh, degrees Celsius within one working day. Storage of small quantities of vaccines needed for immunization during the working day, thus avoiding frequent, uh, or frequent opening of the refrigerator is very, very important. The storage of small quantities of vaccine in emergency situations, e.g. during breakdowns of cold chain equipment, power failures, and similar situations can also be something that we have to prepare for. So you have to take the required number of ice packs from a, a from a freezer, place them, okay, as demonstrated there, so as to cover bottom and then internal walls of the 
had here. Okay, so we have to press the vaccine and dial the and uh, the thermometer carefully in the carrier, also for monitoring purposes of the temperature. You can close the lid of the carrier tightly so that you do not allow warmth or air from the environment to enter, which can alter the temperature or make the ice pack to freeze uh, within a short period of time. Okay, so controlling and monitoring temp temperatures. Refrigerators, freezers, and cold boxes normally have thermometers that measure their internal temperature. So most refrigerators and freezers are fitted with an adjustable thermostat to control and correct uh, storage temperature. A designated person in charge of cold chain equipment should read and record storage temperature on a record sheet at least twice daily or according to the policy. So in your everyday work activity, you are required to have a designated person in charge of the cold chain equipment to see that temperatures are within the required, uh, required level. So that is an example of the monthly temperature recording sheet that you may find attached to the freezer or to the fridge, vaccine fridge. Okay, so that is the annual temperature recording sheet. Okay. Then a sample of refrigerator or cold chain checklist. That is uh, that one in case um, there are certain parameters that we are trying to look at. We, uh, to see that certain uh, uh, certain things were maintained in the in the process of stalling the vaccine. So during immunization uh, uh, sessions, you may use a vaccine carrier to keep bowels needed for each session, and you do not need to work directly from the refrigerator. Remember that vaccines are especially vulnerable at this level. So you have to keep them between the required zero to positive eight at all times and use open valves or those which have already been kept outside the refrigerator or first during the subsequent immunization session. So if deputy hip vaccines are suspected to have been frozen it's important that you don't use them for reconstituted vaccine use only the diluents supplied by the vaccine manufacturer any reconstituted vaccine must be discarded after six hours it's important and it's a who recommendation Right, so here if you have any questions, you can send that uh, to my Google class, I can send on um, my Telegram page, and I'll be able to answer them on the cold chain. So, what we have learned today is that objectives is to minimize all children under the five years against seven of the most serious diseases that is poliomyelitis, measles, diphtheria, whooping cough, tetanus, tuberculosis, and hepatitis B. The cold chain is a very important component of an immunization program to ensure that quality vaccines are administered. A well-structured cold chain system is indispensable to a safe and effective immunization program. So in coming up with these notes, they, those are some of the reference, um, reference uh, books or material that we used. Okay, so thank you for listening, your contribution. We can now relax and send the contribution to the new class. So thank you very much. I'll be meeting you next time when we have recorded another lesson.